Hello people, this is Bear from Air Collector, and uh, today we're going to take a look at Crown Zenith Expected Value. We're going to use our favorite Pokemon Invest Indicator, which is the basically it's the expected value of a pack, but then what we do different here, and uh, I mean what I do different here, is uh, I also take a look at uh, PSA graded cards, I make some assumptions, and then I draw the conclusion on the expected value also using PSA graded cards prices. So before we do that, we have a, a few things to do. I've wrote them down because I'm getting old and I'm forgetting stuff. So first of all, I wanted, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually announce the giveaway winner, which you can do right now. Um, so we can get that out of the way. And uh, basically we are giving away, as we said last week, a Sloking EX and a Quokoval EX, which were pulled on with the Poldia Evolved box break that happened uh, a couple weeks ago. Well, two weeks ago, um, uh, a, a member pulled them and is kind of like giving them away. So shout out to him. Uh, his name is Dark Fathers on Discord. So if you want to thank him. So let's do this. So I'm going to copy the link. I'll do a live copy the link. As a random YouTube uh, comment picker. Fetch. So anything goes. Uh, include replies, no. Allow duplicates, no. Continue. 20 comments, best of luck to you guys. And the winner is Dingo4260. Oh, you Venus. Oh, I was saying you have Venus, fucking investor, so I really appreciate your work. Well, that was actually a nice comment. So Dingo, just uh, if you're in the Discord, just mess me on the Discord, or if you're not, if you could join. Uh, yeah, the link to the Discord is in the description and uh, or else you can message me on Instagram and uh, at Barry Collector, all small caps is a Discord. So yeah, all of you guys, if you want to join, it's a growing community for both European and American. So if you want to join, I highly recommend. And uh, all right, congrats to you. So that is out of the way. You can now talk about Crown Zenith. So Crown Zenith. One thing I want to mention is that, so if you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Um, so here on the channel, we like to focus on both what is happening in the European and the American market when it concerns Pokemon and Pokemon investing. Um, so I'm in the EU, so that's why I am, I basically this charm was born. And uh, in the EU, we had to restock a mass reprint of Crown Zenith. Now, I believe in the US, there was a pretty large reprint at the end of 2023. That did not happen in the European Union. We had it here at the end of February. And uh, look at this, just a lot of, ETBs available right now and prices dropped. Uh, before this reprint, they were selling for around 50 euros um, uh, uh, an ETB, and that's before shipping. So, if you're not familiar with the uh, car market and the European market, all these prices do not include shipping. So, that being said, now the prices are pretty much the same as uh, the um, American market, as you can see, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, for you around 33 32 dollars. And um, I also know the Crown Zenith uh, mini tin display is also no, sought after at $85. It, is com it comes down to about uh, $85. Uh, so it's $4.25 a pack. Now, that being said, I also want to announce, um, it's not official yet, but I'll make it official soon, uh, a box break of Crown Zenith. Uh, we're going to open ETBs live here, and I'm selling packs for... 3.5 euros. Uh, we've had a ton of fun with the Evolve Box Break, which happened for two euros a pack. We're going to do one with Temporal Forces also at um, two euros a pack at uh, the end, at the beginning, sorry, at the beginning of April. And hopefully next week uh, I'll make it official um, ASAP. 3.5 because I saw that the lowest they said was at 4.1. So I figure 3.5 was a good price I could offer you guys. So if you're interested, just let me know in the Discord or on Instagram and I'll set you guys up and I'll make it official um, ASAP. So that being said, uh, that being said, we can start talking about finally Crown Zenith and uh, we can take a look at the Pokemon Invest Indicator. So here a quick look at uh, the first page on TC Player of the cards within the set. It's a... Uh, in my opinion, and it's also, well, it was voted in the last video as uh, the best set by many people of the Sword and Shield era. In my opinion, the best set 
if you look at the artworks, I think, again, best set. I love this Sukun V, uh, but I actually love all of these. Uh, I think they're one better than the other. And uh, again, happy they got a reprint. And um, I guess it's it just time. Let's just get straight into the video. Otherwise, it's going to get too long. And um, if you enjoyed the video, I made a playlist where I did the same thing that we're going to do today with uh, Poldean Fates, Poldean Evolved, and Lost Origin. So if you're interested in this type of video, um, first of all, please let me know. And uh, second of all, we can uh, we can go take a look at them. So, okay, so here we have to make a few assumptions before we get into it. So, we only take into consideration Galarian Gallery cards, and then from the main set, Ultra Secret, which is just the Pikachu, and Radiant Rare. So, we're also assuming that every card within a, a category, so a non-V, within the Galarian Gallery, a non-V, a V-Trainer, or a Gold card, um, is it, they're equally distributed. So, what I mean is, Pulling a Giratina has the same probability of pulling an Arcus. Pulling a uh, Leafian V has the same probability of pulling a Glacian V. Uh, I think they're a V star. So, equally distributed, that's basically what it means. Is that the case? Oh, that's a long story. Uh, it should be theoretically, but empirically, we don't really know. They tend to be, uh, but that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a topic for another video, maybe or maybe not. I uh, don't want to get into it right now. Prices come from TCG Player. There are in US dollar market prices for raw cards. And uh, pull rates come from TCG Infinity. Uh, we tend to use those data here on the channel. They tend to win a, a decent amount of packs. Theoretically, you should open an infinite amount of packs. Can you do that? Absolutely not. Um, but, uh, you know, if they're all liquid distributed and the Pokemon Company International does their job uh, at uh, equally distributed all the cards within a category, then this should hold true and we can make those calculations. That's why I'm saying this assumption. I'm saying, look, I'm making this assumption when when calculating the expected pack value. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Remember, these are estimators. We're estimating the pack value, uh, this expected value and all its expected value uh, in statistic uh, we're estimating the expected value, um, so we're using estimators. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, the what it it's called the. Um, not sure about the word in English, so I'm just gonna. I brought myself into a, what uh, a dark hole it's called, um, but uh, it's basically you have the mean. The mean is theoretically, and then can you have the average? So we're talking the average. The mean is a theoretical value, uh, which. We cannot calculate, but we can estimate, and that's what we're doing. Uh, if you're familiar, I'm 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 saying all this because I'm a mathematician soon to graduate, but I do pure math. I don't do statistics, which is also a, a branch of math. Um, but um, I do a few things as um, we have to do it. So I'm ranting too much, am I not? Sorry, guys. Please forgive me. Uh, but uh, I I like this stuff, and I I think it's very clear that uh, we uh, state these assumptions. Um, and I'll tell you why later. So, that being said, uh, again, when estimating the value, we're doing the average, as, as we just said. Uh, and we're doing that because we're assuming they're equally distributed. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, Barry, please stop. Just go ahead. Sorry. I will. Um, and uh, that's basically uh, the value. Expected uh, value uh, within a pack from the Golden Gallery, $1.97. Expected value within a pack from an Ultra Rare, 27 cents. Radiant Rare, 9 cents. Secret, 5 cents. It comes down to an expected value of um, basically a ultra rare or higher. So we're not considering regular rares, hollows, and what else? But commons and uncommons is $2.37. Now, that's for raw cards. Now that's when things get interesting. Because, let me zoom in. We're looking at these cards only, PSA graded cards. Now, we have to make a few further assumptions here. Number one, we're assuming the cost of grading is $15 per card. I'm aware that the lowest tier for PSA graded cards is $15. If it hasn't changed, we're assuming that. Now, 
that's the simplest assumption we're to make. The second one, I'll try to explain it. Hope it's clear. If not, please let me know in the comments or in the Discord. Just join and, and ask because this isn't very important. So we're assuming we're pulling a card out of a pack, and it's a it's not a damaged pack, and it's going to get either a nine or a ten. So when assuming that it's going to get either a nine or a ten, we're assuming that everyone did the same. In order for this data to actually um, us be able to work with, we need to assume that everyone did the same. Is that realistic? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, we don't know what people thought or assumed before they sent cards to get graded. There's a few different scenarios, which I'm just gonna list them uh, briefly. One, people think uh, did what we did. They opened, everyone opened a, a pack, they got a, a Tina a Gold Star, sent it off to grading. Everyone did that. How highly unrealistic. Number two, uh, everyone is a, a very experienced grader in, sense, in terms of they send cards to get graded, so they're experienced in that regards. And uh, basically, they look at the cards, centering was good, um, that card uh, was flawless, blah, 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 blah. They know from experience that uh, it has a very uh, high percentage of getting a 10. That's another scenario that's possible. Another scenario is a card has gone from owner B to A, I mean, from A to B to C to D. It, it went through many different owners. Uh, it might have gotten damaged by doing that. And uh, owner F uh, bought the car and he just got it graded because he wanted to. Uh, we don't know. So that's another scenario. Um, so we don't know what people thought or assumed when they got it graded. We know what we are assuming for the sake of this video and these calculations. And one thing I want to, th this is very important because one thing that I hear a lot on uh, YouTube from different people is they look at PSA pop reports and let's say, let's take the Tina to, do, to, to give you guys an example. They'd look at the prop, uh, this is a probability of getting a 10, and that's 64%. So, they let's say they look at the T9, they say, oh, 64% of the time, they usually be like, guys, 64% uh, of the time, you're gonna get a 10 on a Tina. So, if you buy 10 Tinas, six of them are gonna get a 10. So, I don't wanna, I just wanna briefly touch this argument. First of all, this is very deceiving when doing that. Why? I just said why, because you don't know what people assumed or thought before they sent their own cards to get graded. And uh, that's what gives you pop reports. P other people sending cards to get graded, you don't know why they send them. And the different scenarios, I, some of them at least, I listed them. So saying 64% of the time is gonna get a, a, a 10. One is deceiving. Two, that's my own opinion. So that is the fact that it's deceiving, it's a fact, and I told you why, it's a fact. Two, that's my personal opinion. I think it's not very smart uh, because it, either you thought about these different scenarios, but you maybe because, let's say that for um, time purposes, you didn't want your videos to be, let's let's say you didn't want uh, your videos to, to be too long, so you, you didn't mention it. Let's, let's go with that route. Um, but yeah, not really smart in my opinion. So that being said, hope it's clear. If so, please let me know in the comments and uh, hopefully you guys agree with me. Again, please let me know in the comments. That's the only tool I have with you guys to, to interact. Um, so that being said, we I stated in my assumptions and uh, these prices come from uh, eBay sales. PSA 9 prices are basically raw price uh, grading fee, some are a bit less. And PSA 10 are, I tend to look at auctions. And I tend to look at multiple auctions. And I tend to stay on the lower end of the sale, recorded sales. So I try to be as conservative as possible. Again, these are expected value and these are estimations we talked about already. No need to go over it again. Blah, 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 we do the same things. Uh, and uh, long story short, the expected puck value now stands at $3.09. So, 
as I think I said everything I had to say. I did all the assumption. Uh, I mean, I said all the assumption I had to state. So, what happened? What changed? Well, the expected value from a V or a trainer within the glaring gallery has increased 38%. The expected value of a gold car is increased also 38%. The overall expected value of a pack has increased 30%. That's quite that's that's quite a lot. Now, uh, interesting visual representation of the pop reports for the gold cards, which are, in my opinion, the most sought after, uh, as well as the most um, expensive, along with the Mewtwo, which star, Tina, in blue, is the uh, most graded card, followed by the Arceus, and then Pocky Diaga are pretty similar when it comes to pop reports. And then here, PSA 10 ratios, uh, again, just with 9 and 10, I didn't compare anything below that. Uh, so that's a ratio of uh, PSA 10s compared to PSA 10s and 9s. Um, just interesting that the Cynthia Full Art has the lowest PSA 10 ratio, whereas the Dark Ivy Star has the highest, uh, very close, uh, sorry, closely followed by Vientay V. So that being said, one thing, uh, as always, I give you the data. It's you guys do whatever you want to. Um, so if you enjoy this format, please let me know. As I said, there's other videos you can see here, Pauline Fades, Pauline Evolved, and Lost Origin. Um, but what I want to do, say here is we've seen that market price for these packs goes for around $4 for euros. The expected pop value after grading is $3. Now, let's take a look at Lost Origin. So for lost origin, after grading, expected buck value is around one point six dollars. Now that's probably a month old. Uh, maybe prices have changed a bit. Anyways, below two dollars. Significantly below two dollars because even even though it's just forty cents, it's what thirty percent difference between one point six and uh, and uh, two. So it's it's quite a lot. Thirty percent is a lot. And uh, if you look at Lost Origin box prices, they sell for around $140, $145 now, uh, nowadays. And that's around about $4 a pack. So market price, $4 a pack. Expected pack value after grading, 1.6. That's over 100% difference in price. Crown Zenith, that's about what a... Uh, so that's it's about 50% of three is 1.5 so it's that's a, what 30 30 percent it's about a 30 percent difference in price between market price and expected puck value after grading uh, whereas loss origin is over 100 percent so what we've seen so far with this indicator and again that's just what we've seen I'm not stating anything I'm just observing the data so what we have seen is that when a set just comes out, obviously the PSA um, prices of, of those cars, of the chase car is gonna be inflated. They're gonna come down, they usually come down, they tend to come down, history has shown us they come down. Um, I'm not saying that they will, but they tend to. Uh, gotta be careful with uh, the words, the word choices. Uh, again, English not my first language, so excuse me. Um, and, um, so usually the, the, the expected back value of a freshly set, set just, just come out, it's gonna be very close to market price. And we also seen that with Pulte Evolved, uh, to, uh, about $2 a pack, where market price was what, th around $3. So similar pricing. Again, percentage wise, quite different, always all, over 30% difference, but tend to be not so distant but when a set is a bit old, um, and not only it's old, but supply has diminished, there's a, a not a much supply of, it's, it's a mixture of a lack of supply and sealed product, an abundance in demand, uh, sorry, an abundance in supply of uh, single carts, 
an abundant supply of single graded cards. And uh, you know, obviously demand uh, shifts uh, for, 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 for single cards over time. So it's a mixture of all of these um, factors that I've, you know, we've seen that they start to take part into the, the, the spread between expected pack value and market price. So that's just an observation I wanted to make. I'm not saying anything. Um, and um, I'm actually ha uh, curious to, to, to know what you guys think about it. Uh, if you could please let me know in the comments. Now, that being said, thank you for watching. One last thing I want to say is to not forget to, ooh, that's a lot of stuff. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on any update. If you enjoy the format, you can go watch the previous videos. As well, I hope to see you in the Discord and we can chat there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.